Hello and welcome to the fifth JavaScript video tutorial from Nilla Vision, which is actually a continuation of uh, part four, where we started to create an Ajax gallery. The beauty of Ajax is that it enables you to load content into your page without the page needing to be refreshed. And you can see here how our images just populates an existent div on the page. In the previous tutorial, we learned how to collect all the relevant links into an array and then we added an onclick function to those links. Today we're going to focus on the actual ADX request. The request will enable us to get data back from the server and we will also learn how to pass variables along with the request. Confused? Well, all you have to do is listen close because I'm going to explain everything in detail. To figure out how an AJAX request works, we're going to stop by w3schools.com slash AJAX and here we can find all the components we need. You can see down here in the sidebar there's some links uh, with documentation for all the code we need. First we will have to instantiate the XML HTTP request object. We do that by declaring a variable. And by the way, this method doesn't work on IE6 and below, so there's some code down here that'll make it work on older browsers as well. We are also gonna need the open method for this uh, object. And you can see here there's some parameters we can add. We can specify if we want to use get or post method, and we can specify the path to the content. And in the end, there's a Boolean value here, which determines if the content should be loaded asynchronous or not. We will also need something called uh, response text. And as you can see, it's a property uh, of our object. And that property just represents the loaded content. And you can see here in the code how it gets added to an element on the page. Finally, we will need an unready state change function this is basically an event that occurs when the content has been loaded. And when uh, the on ready state change function is ready, then we can add the response text uh, to the page. I'm not going to try to explain what ready state 4 and the status 200 represents. But um, I know this much that when the if statement here find those values true, then, the, then we should be good. So don't mess with those values unless you know what you're doing. Now I have explained about the request object the best I can. But if you didn't get it, don't worry, because we're just going to press this link here and then we'll get all the code we need in the right context. And we're just going to copy that and paste it into our project. We won't be needing this onclick function that the code is wrapped up in, because in the last tutorial we created our own function. So we're just going to grab the code uh, inside the function. Now I have opened up our HTML document with the code we created the last time. I'm just going to delete the, the alert box. We don't need that anymore. And then I'll add some space. And then I'm just going to paste the code we just copied in here in the function body. So every time the user now clicks a link with the special link class name, then the AJAX request is going to be fired off. There's just some minor adjustments I'm going to make in the code here. You can see that the response text is going to be added to a div that is called my div. I'm going to change that div name to gallery container instead. And of course, I will have to create that div in the HTML markup as well. This div will be the element on the page where the loaded content will be displayed. Div ID gallery container. I will also change the actual file that uh, we're requesting. First, I'm just going to load some static HTML into the page. So I will uh, request a file called test HTML. And we will, of course, also need the file itself that should be loaded. So I'll just create a new document here, HTML. We don't need the doc type declaration or any uh, HTML tags or body tags or anything like that. We already got that in our main document. I'll just write some clean HTML here. 
I'll make a heading and a bit of unformatted text. And in order to test this, I will need to FTP the files to a server because I don't think this can run locally. So I've just saved the files here and I'm taking the gallery HTML, our main document, and the test HTML that I've just created and transferring those two files to my server. And now we can see the document live. You can see if I press a link with the normal class, then uh, the browser will just follow that link. But if I press a link with the special class, then the Ajax content will be loaded into our div. You would think that we could just link to an image instead of a HTML document down here in our open method, and then just wrap an image tag around the response text. But that's not possible because uh, the content that is going to be loaded in isn't an URL, but the actual uh, HTML formatted file. So if we tried to do that, we would just get a lot of uh, image data displayed in numbers on the screen. You can possibly use AGX to load string data instead and then have the URL in the string. But the workaround uh, that we're going to implement here is much cooler because it will show you how able AJAX is to communicate with PHP or ASP. So what I'm planning to do is instead of specifying an image in the open method, then I'm going to specify a PHP file. Then I will create a JavaScript variable which will store the hrefs of the links in question. And uh, I will pass that variable to the PHP file and the PHP file will then wrap image text around the variable and return it as HTML. But in order to do that, uh, we'll first need to specify some hrefs of the links. So now I'll just type in the images we want in our gallery in the href attribute. And in the normal link down here, I'm just going to link to google.com. In order to pass all these hrefs with our Ajax request, we will need to set them up as a variable. So I'm just declaring a variable called URL, and then I'm using the this keyword, which is referring to the owner of the function, meaning the link in question, and then accessing that link's href. So now we have a variable we can pass to the PHP document. And uh, how do we do that? If we go back to W3Schools, uh, again, we can see some documentation here covering uh, ASP and PHP. And there's an example here. This is with uh, ASP, but it works the same with uh, PHP. You can see we need to link to our file, just like we did with the HTML file. Then we will add a question mark, then a query or a key and finally a value for that key. And that value will be the URL variable. So in our code, in the open method here, I'm just going to replace the test HTML with a PHP file, and I've just chosen to call it storage.php. Then I add the question mark, and then I need a name for the key, and I'll just call it the URL. And uh, then we need the value for the key, and that was our variable, and it was called URL. Now I have created the storage PHP file. And since this is a JavaScript tutorial, I'll only briefly cover what it is doing. But it's pretty simple, actually. Uh, first, we declare a variable, and that variable is just storing the value of the key, the URL, that PHP received with the get method. And then I just got some HTML down here, an image tag, and I'm printing the PHP variable out in the source attribute and the alt attribute. Okay, that should be it. We just need to upload the files to the server, and you can see I've uploaded the images we need as well. And now I'm testing the document live, but apparently something is wrong. I must have made a typo somewhere. 
Let me just pause the transmission for a minute and find the error. Oh yes, here's the error. I forgot an equal to sign between the key and the value in our open method. So I'll try uh, again. And uh, this time around everything seems to be working correctly. Except this link here. And that's just because that image doesn't exist on the server. I only uploaded four images. Even though Ajax is great, we can't display files that doesn't exist, of course. And um, the link to Google doesn't work either. I think I, I forgot an HTTP in the href. But that's just errors in the HTML markup. All the scripting is uh, working bulletproof. And as soon as I have uh, polished the code a little bit and added some comments, then I will give you a link to the source code in the video description. I'll probably be making two versions, a developer version uh, with all the codes and the comments and the example here, and then a production version where the script is separated. So you just can link to it whenever you want to use this functionality without uh, having to deal with the code. Right now I can already see uh, some room for improvement. For instance here where we are instantiating our HTTP object, maybe we were better off doing that globally instead of uh, within the function. Or maybe do it in a window onload function so that this browser check doesn't have to be performed every time a button is clicked. But if there's uh, any JavaScript sharks out there, I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Just add a comment below. And if there's any ASP people out there, I would love to hear from you too if you have uh, any idea how this PHP file might look in a ASP version. I don't have a clue uh, myself how ASP and .NET works. That's probably going to be the next big challenge in my life. Uh, but I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, and Maybe we can make an ASP version of the same functionality. Finally, a word to all the JavaScript beginners watching this. Thanks for your patience. I hope you didn't find it too uh, complicated. I know these Ajax tutorials has been a little more advanced than the previous tutorials. But if you have been watching my previous videos, you should be able to understand how this code works. If that's not the case, then don't despair, because you can easily do the same uh, functionality with jQuery. That's a lot easier. However, working with this raw JavaScript method will make your script perform a lot better than using jQuery. And my intention was, of course, also to give you an idea of what goes on under the hood when performing an AJAX call. Anyway, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and all that.